Good day, everybody. It's Dean from the Royal Computer Museum, and I haven't been to, to the lab here in a few weeks, and like I always say, whenever I come here, especially after it's been a few weeks, I either find something I didn't see before, or I just notice something that's, I don't know, you know, maybe we could donate when I wasn't here or something, and today is one of those days, and it is not Mr. Potato Head. No, it is actually this. It is this right here, and this is a Radio Shack branded. Uh, TRS-80 microcolor computer. It's a model MC-10. And I saw this on one of the shelves. And unless I've completely missed it, I've never seen this here. So I figure, you know what? Let's, let's take a look at it. Okay, so again, Radio Shack branded TRS-80 microcolor computer. As far as I remember, all the Radio Shack, you know, late 70s, 80s computer stuff were all TRS-80 something. You know, TRS-80 was the brand, you know, Tandy Radio Shack. And it had a model, a name, something or another. It had a catalog number, which all their products had these catalog numbers. Even up to like before they closed, they still use these numbers. I guess they were all unique. You know, the styling is small. It's kind of reminiscent of, I got one over here just to show you guys. Reminds me of this guy. A Sinclair 1000. And apparently that was kind of the point. Uh, these came out in 1983. They were... Price at $119.99, and they were meant to compete with that Sinclair 1000 and a Commodore VIC-20. The Sinclair was about 100 bucks when they came out. I forget what the VIC-20 was. Uh, a little more expensive, but still in that same you know bargain type area. Uh, looking at the box, it says what it should have on here. Uh, connects any standard TV, includes the AC adapter, instruction manual, complete and ready to plug in. Easy to learn. 4K of memory, a serial port, and a cassette port. I So these had 4K of memory in them. There was an expansion unit that let you bump it up to, I believe, 20K for, for working RAM. They had 8K of ROM, which contained Microsoft Basic, or a special version of it, which was like a special MCC color, or, you know, MCC Basic. And these were only around for, you know, same stuff here. Nothing's on the back. And these were... They weren't popular. I, I think they just had a lot more stuff or that you could do things with, and this really didn't suit the bill for for most people, unfortunately. Hobbyists like this, they say you could learn on it. it. Had a lot of the commands built in on the keys. But let's open it up. Let's take a look at it. We'll open it this way. And of course, this is not new in box. I'm sure this was just donated by somebody who just kept it nicely in the box. Yeah, as evidenced by the fact that the manuals are in baggies, you know. So looking at this, we have some documentation. As far as these books go, there were two of them in the bag. I'm assuming these both came with the with the computer. And first we have this little one, which says it's the TRS-80 Microcolor Computer Startup Guide, or just startup, really easy stuff. Turn on the TV, channel 3 or 4, antenna, any accessories, turn it on, and it will say this. That's, that's pretty good. Pretty much, if you do all this and you get this, you did it right. I actually like that. That's that's pretty cool. As far as looking here, special characters, the operators, functions, give me some basic functionality, the control keys, what they do, some other functionality up there, and a, kind of a pullout of basic commands. So, you know, there's some basic to be doing here. You know, there's, you can definitely get started on that. As far as this goes, we have the Operation and Language Reference Manual, kind of an expanded version of that little quick start guide. There's a lot in here, as you can see. But, you know, buzzing through, meet the MC-10, the setup, the operation, using the MC-10, volume control. Oh, see what they have, you know, volume control, loading from a tape, learning, how to connect it, and there we go. So again, that is the documentation that came with the MC-10, at least as far as I know. We have what looks like the, it's a really hefty TV adapter, the famous, you know, non-automatic RF switch, game mode and TV mode, connect the game, or aka the computer, and connect it to the end, to like the 75 ohm antenna ports on your TV at the time. This would be the cord to connect the computer to that RF adapter. And again, it would carry, if this thing does sound, it would carry sound over it as well. And let's see if we can carefully get the styrofoam out of here. Let's move this book real quick. And we'll see if we can spin the whole box around, open it up. Yeah, I think we're good here. 
Here we go. Okay, so let's do this. Let's lift the box out of the way. We saw enough of the box. And now we can see the styrofoam, which is none too exciting. So let's get rid of that styrofoam real quick. Sorry about the squeakies. No one likes the squeaks. And there it is. There's the main event. So first thought, this is pretty hefty. I don't know the weight of this, but it's definitely heavier than the uh, than the Seclair here. So just comparing again, this was same market segment. You know, the ultra cheap computer is right around a hundred bucks. This is very, very. There's nothing to this. Um, this has a little more heft to it. The keys are nicer. It is a you know real keys. They have travel. You can kind of see. I am pushing them down. It's not a membrane. Like on this one, there's, you know, nothing there. So this is a chiclet style keyboard. You know, you wouldn't really, I mean, you're not going to type on this unless you have like toothpick fingers, but it's enough where you could probably type decently to, you know, to learn, you know, I wouldn't be writing programs on here or doing really anything else. But so anyways, taking a look around the back, we have a sealed up expansion slot which is where the memory expansion would go. We have, again, for that two TV cord, this this gray cord right here connected to the TV so slot, have the AC adapter. That's a pretty hefty AC adapter right there. And right here we have the serial connection and the cassette connection. And looking around, oh, here we go. And we got an on and off switch. So that's nice. I think even the Sinclair lacks that. So comparatively, this is a little more featured than the Sinclair. So again, looking at the keyboard, um, some of that same stuff, and I, I hate to keep comparing it to Sinclair, but it, this was the competition for it. So pretty much it had the same thing where it would have like the basic commands right on, on the keys or above them just for easy reference, you know, for learning. That's what they always market it to. I mean, I know computers are for learning, but that was always what they gave. This is for learning. <laughs> I do gotta say I like the placement of the arrows being the W A S and Z, not W A S D as modern, but you know, close enough. They are up, down, left, right in a semi workable formation. It almost feels like, you know what, if 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 I had to say it, if there was only these keys here and maybe two more buttons, it almost feels like a big old Nintendo controller. Just oversized. So but yeah, not a bad look. This one's in pretty good shape. A couple scratches here and there. It's very minimal yellowing. I mean, this looks like the color of any other Tandy product of computer I've seen. So I don't even think it's yellowed. I think it's just how it is. It's got the reset button. I'm wondering just again to compare. This has serial and cassette. I forget if the Sinclair has both. The Sinclair has the cassette ports via audio. And then the expansion port. So yeah, there's no serial port on the Sinclair. So yeah, um... There's a good one-up thing right there. So the serial port was a big thing, especially for hobbies. They need some kind of computer to plug into who knows what in the 80s, and they want something cheap. I guess this could work for them. You know, again, a learning computer. And I don't have any example of the memory expansion, but it probably, if I had to open it, it probably looks something like that. It'll be a basic cartridge connector. Connect in there to bump it up to that 20K of RAM instead of the, the built-in 4. I mean, even... I mean, we're saying 1983, and this had 4K. A Commodore 64, a year before, 1982, had 64K. The Apples, I mean, again, different market segments, but, I mean, 4K is pretty small at this point. So, this is a pretty neat little computer. So, unfortunately, I don't have a TV. I can readily grab... I know this TV's back there. I know if I'll be pointing it out, but um, I don't get a second right now to do that. I just want to be a quick rundown of this computer but if i had to say it looks like it probably works we'll have to maybe get a, a tv connected soon turn this guy on check it out and see what it's all about as far as running wise because i'm willing to bet by the shape it's in it probably works perfectly fine all right so again this was the micro color computer aka the trs 80 model mc10 from 1983 120 bucks when it came out discontinued sadly after just a year but did have little tiny keys that you could actually type on how neat is that? So if you're new to the channel, guys, go ahead and subscribe. Give it a thumbs up if you like the video. We got a, quite a few back catalog of videos now, so check out some other stuff on the channel if you are new. And we will see you guys next time.